I'm Michael Cioni, and uh, I work for Plaster City Digital Post. Plaster City was kind of started in, in two parts. One, it was started by, uh, uh, it was founded on Christopher Coppola's production company, Plaster City Productions, and Elise Roberts kind of met him, and they kind of partnered up. And at the same time, my partners and I, who are all at Southern Illinois University, kind of met each other in school. And uh, we won like the student Emmys. They have like student Emmy competitions. And we'd won those a couple years in a row. And every time we'd win one, they'd send you to different cities. We'd been to the Cannes Film Festival and to Los Angeles many times. And in that, we realized that there was kind of a hole in the industry that was kind of a, an Apple-centric Final Cut Pro-based hole. And so when we met Christopher and Elise, we kind of wanted to jump on that hole and said, this would have really be a good market for people to start kind of exploring independent filmmaking without the high-end offline and online processes that people were typically used to doing. And in 1999, when, um, uh, in 1999, Apple released Final Cut Pro, the G4. Sony released the DSR series, the PD-150 camera, and Firewire all came out at the same time. So, my buddy and I, Ian Berdovec, decided to take our student loans and buy that equipment instead of paying for school and ended up uh, utilizing that to do um, products and student films and things like that that ended up uh, kind of catapulting us into an industry where by the time we were here was very hungry for that type of uh, post-production infrastructure. Well, Plaster City is kind of an exciting post-production house because it's, it's all full of young and new talent. Um, and that talent is really based around a data-centric workflow. We were able to get some property on uh, Sunset in Coenga, uh, right at 6500 Sunset Boulevard, and it really just was uh, kind of the planets were aligned. We were really blessed to be able to kind of find a venue that would support the type of ideas we wanted to build. What's really interesting is when we got the property, um, we had long-term plans for it in order to develop, and we used funding based on the growth of the company to actually build it. So I think our clients got to see the money that we earned went right back into the company. And so the company is very dynamic because it likes to continue to upgrade itself. Um, we know that there's a huge infrastructure in this town for legacy equipment and people have to build things just to be open. And once you bought something, you kind of have to pay it off for X amount of years. But at Plaster City, because we're data centric, we're able to modify huge percentages of our infrastructure with software, which is essentially in it, very inexpensive, comparatively speaking. So we can be very forthcoming and dynamic about progression in the company without having to dump a ton of money in order to stay on top of the uh, market. And that's really made a huge difference because we're able to cover a lot more ground in a lot less time. And we're not by any means the only people that are doing this. There are people that are adapting this type of um, model all over the place. But what we do differently, I think, is we really understand from a user perspective what people are going through as much as a finishing talent uh, polishing perspective as well. So when you, get, when you work with Plaster City, you often have people that uh, will know how, what you're going through and what you're actually struggling with, um, how to solve those problems, rather than, well, when it comes to us, we just do our part of the fence. You know, we know when things get expensive, we know when you are on our side of the fence, things get expensive very quickly. So we encourage people to do as much as they can based on their equipment, their technology, their uh, comfort levels and, 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 and skills to do as much as they can on their side of the fence. And then as soon as they're ready, they can pass the baton to us and we'll do the finishing. For some people, that's the whole job. And for other people, it's just the last tapes that need to be generated at the end. And we're totally agnostic as to what format you're shooting on and We've got very, very custom workflows that are pretty progressive that allow people to take anything from the, the newest tape gear to the, to the newest uh, tapeless gear to 35 millimeter film. So we are definitely trying to be on the edge of uh, giving people the most dynamic options with regards to, uh, without regard to whichever format they decide to shoot on. It's advantageous for everybody when we get involved at the beginning of the process. Because we can often eliminate entire services on the budget that they're used to performing in previous productions. And so that's the first thing that we do. We often do it with the producers, the post-production supervisors. And that's a really great start for anyone who's just gearing up to make a movie before they have all the above-the-line heads filled and all the spots filled. 
Uh, once you do have those people filled, we love to meet with DPs and actually go over what we do. Because we know what we're doing is essentially the, the, the if the DPs you know, going to take us 80% of the way. We want to make that last 20% where we polish their film in a way that they're very comfortable with. So we like to encourage them to meet with us and actually not only just screen our reels, where a lot of people are like, oh, show me the colors reel. OK, why don't you meet the colors? Why don't you see what they actually do and what they can offer? You know, For us, it's not about how much mileage a colorist might have over the decades they've been doing the job. It's more about what they can bring to a specific project, regardless of what their history might be. It's also. Uh, very important for us just to be in constant communication with post-production supervisors. And it's a really hard market for those, those folks today because they have to keep up. They're expected to know a lot more than it's possible. And I know that uh, at Plaster City, we take uh, a lot of time to educate them. In fact, we provide what we consider the digital intermediate supervisor position for them because we don't expect the post-super to actually be able to get them through a DI through, without uh, any problems. So we actually say, here's where your job might end. And we'll be able to fill the DI sections of it, where they're really complicated. We'll educate you, and then you won't need us next time. And that's pretty much just something we've had to throw in just out of uh, experience doing these jobs. Like they, It's just too much right now. So as the market continues to be um, ever-changing as quickly as it is, which we encourage, we know that it's kind of on our shoulders if we're going to encourage people to use these new tools, to educate them in the process. So even doing things such as this is important for us to all who are in this together, all of us to be able to kind of elevate uh, the, um, the entire skill set across people that uh, might not have experience with it just as yet. When we started learning about the RED, uh, it was the fact that Ted Shilowitz was on board with this, that we became early adopters and believers that this would be, uh, this would be beyond our expectations. Uh, Ted's ability to understand and uh, drive technology for a consumer, um, you know, from a consumer perspective, he makes it so user friendly and he takes care of so much of the, uh, the little things that need to be considered. We knew that we were signing on to a good idea when we said we're going to try to get on this red thing and support it um, and not try to pick apart its shortcut falls. Um, and so Ted at the helm really is the beginning of what makes red fantastic. The second thing is that his engineering team has totally reworked the books on how to actually manufacture a digital cinema product. By that I mean they are, they, I, right this moment, the moment we're recording this and the moment that people are watching it, those guys are building a better camera. And never has a camera been so malleable as this one. The fact that this camera, it is really, it's in the words of Bengt, uh, who spoke earlier this morning, Bengt says, it's like getting a new film stock every four to eight weeks. It's amazing to think that your, 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 your tool is going to continue to change for the better every single month that goes around the clock. So that's a remarkable place to be. Um, our involvement with RED has actually made a lot of sense because we have been involved heavily with Panasonic in the adaption of tapeless workflows in their P2 line. And we've seen tremendous success with Panasonic's P2 line being accepted by the industry very quickly. And to go three years ago where nobody shot without tape, all the way to nobody's questioning it anymore, is an amazing accomplishment for Panasonic to have been able to produce. And now Red and other manufacturers that are doing similar tapeless acquisitions are creating, are, are kind of piggybacking on Panasonic's ability to kind of set the tone for this is OK, this is stable. We don't hear horror stories of footage being deleted or lost or corrupted or anything like that. If it, ex if it was out there, we'd hear it. The bloggers are loud. We'd know it was out there. But it's not. And so Red's capitalizing on tapeless workflows, and so is Plaster City, because it actually requires less effort for us to produce dailies and DI and editing for projects that don't have any tapes. Because when we're working with tape, an hour is an hour. When we work with P2 or we work with Red, an hour might be 10 or 15 minutes. And that allows us to do more with less effort be able to process more films uh, with less overhead and have more projects be finished with less labor. So all that has kind of empowered not just independent filmmakers, which is cool, it empowers television shows and commercials and music videos and features to all kind of start to explore where this is.